That was the last farewell by Roger Whittaker, sounding very much like uh, I Love Him Dearly by Webb Pierce. Well, we've got uh, Lynn Miller in the studio from uh, Rockingham Will, and uh, we're going to have a little chat with her in a minute. We'll just... Uh Coming to you from Rockingham, IPL Radio. Welcome to IPL Radio, Lynn. Thank you, Alan. It's good to be here again. Yeah, it has been a little while. It has been. A bit of changes happening and going on, huh? Yes. Haven't been to any more uh, visits to Kenya in the meantime? Too busy writing the book. Have said no to everything. Okay. I'm doing my second draft and I just really need to get this finished. Yeah. It's in the second draft, is it? Yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, are we allowed to know the title? It's called Eternity Now. Eternity Now. Yes. Very good. I, I can relate to that. Yep, um, we're looking forward to reading it when it comes out. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing it so you can read it. <laughs> so is it being published uh, here in West Australia? Or? I, I've got a whole lot of different things that, and information people have given me So because I, I'm just praying through that, looking into the way and just feeling out. Right. You, you can actually start one way and then just to get it out there and then go another way if you want to. So, right. um, and then there's a lot of logistics like... Uh, Getting your ISBN number and your ABN oh, number. Oh, right. All that so I'm sort of starting to work on those kind of things now. All that library stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, how long have you been working on the book? Probably a lot of... The first draft I did in 2022 um, and just put it down, thinking I'm going to pick it up straight away in 2023, but ended up going to Africa three times instead. Mm. So it just couldn't touch it. There was just too much preparing for conferences and and plus the church. So this year I picked it up, second draft, and um, hopefully I'll get the whole lot finished by August. That's what I'm. That's what I'd right. like to see happen. And uh, research, you do a bit of research. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, is, is the research happening at the same time that you're writing, or is you you do all your research and then? Both. Sit I found down. before I started writing, I did a, I did a whole lot of research and just threw it into folders and then I didn't realise how much I had. Um, so I thought, oh no, I need to start with this and now it's as you go along. Um, but it's not just research, it's a whole lot of different ways that I just get a thought or a mm. something comes to me and I just, I have so many notebooks where I've got scribbles on and yes. I take the notebooks, take them home and I just start injecting that needs to go there and that there and that there and... Just get that thought rolling. Thank goodness for computers, eh? Amen. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the great thing about computers yeah. is you can sort of uh, you even switch things around. Switch things, cut and paste. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, all good. Yeah. Now you've come to bring us a food for thought for today, Lynn. Yeah, I was. Um, I was actually thinking of actually just talking um, about the Bible itself as a book. Right. Um, because many people who are not Christians um, just see it as a Christian thing and don't realise it that it's a, it's a it is we know it's the word of God but it's mm. when you think about the Bible as a book men will say oh it's just a book written by man mm. um, but there are so many facts about the the Bible itself that people don't know for example the Bible has over 63,000 cross-references. Now, a mathematician would say that that many cross-references, if it was written by one man, that man would be the greatest composer that ever lived. Mm. But we've got 63,000 cross-references written by 40 men. And those 40 men lived over a 1,500-year period. Yes. So the odds of the, if the odds of one man is like the greatest composer that ever lived, the odds of forty men over fifteen hundred years is like impossible. Yes. Except there's some kind of divine aspect here, some some divine intervention. The Bible was also these men. They were they weren't men of the same. They were they were men from different cultures. They were men from different, completely different ways of life. Some of them were men who wrote under um, in war periods. Some of them were men who wrote as nomads. Some of them were were men who wrote in exile. Mm. Others under monarchy. So that not just the kind of person, but also the 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 
who they were and where they lived politically, economically, culturally, all of that was completely different. And yet, in the Bible, there's a, an incredible consistency. It just does not contradict itself. Mm. And none of these men could have copied because the Bible, if you even think about just the four Gospels, the Gospels didn't start being written till 40 years after Christ died. Yes. And then they were written over the next century, the next 100 years, um, with different foc focus from, from the different authors. But the Bible itself, it, it's got 66 books. Mm. And it, it is a book, if you just look at it as a book, that has been the best-selling book ever. It has sold over 5 billion copies. Mm. It's the only book I know that has been translated into half the world's languages. So I guess the food for thought is, hey, if you've never read the Bible, you might want to look at this. Also, historically, the Bible, at the time the Bible was written, history, Joseph Flavius, Josephus Flavius, mm, yes. um, for the Jews and for the Romans Tacitus, history records objectively, because history is supposed to be objective recording, mm. records objectively, these things happened, these things happened. Yes. So I guess I wanted to talk about the Bible because I think um, a mindset has developed where people just shut down when they hear, hear just the word Bible. Um, and yet the shutdown occurs out of something that's, I don't know what, what certainly, I can't put a name to it fully because I don't think it's just one name, but the shutdown occurs without even considering how about having a look at this book. Mm. Um, for example, and I think I might have shared this from a different context before, when, um, when I used to do business coaching and I had a, a whole lot of executives from different pharmacy groups throughout Perth were doing a training and I decided that I would put little sayings from the book of Proverbs um, into a little bucket. So at the end of the training, each leader had to pick a, a proverb. And then they had to, because the Bible is full of many, many themes, themes about leadership, about authority, about marriage, about, about nature, about government, about so many things, Proverbs is called a book of wisdom. And it literally has a lot of wisdom about life itself, a lot of good insight and guidance about it. So each leader, as they read the proverb, was asked to relate it to what they had just learnt. What, what is this saying about what you've just learnt? And they're sort of like going, wow, wow. And then I'm hearing people go, where, where is this? Where did you get this from? And I said, it's the book of Proverbs in the Bible. It's called the book of wisdom. And... You know, that your eyes just open up again and you realise fresh, like, people have never, ne they've never read what, what we've read. They, they, they've not looked at what we've looked at. No. Whether in the end you believe or not, it's a book that's well worth reading. It's a book that's well worth looking at. But the fact that it's also divinely inspired, it's a book that God can speak to you through. Mm. Even even if you don't think he can or don't want to, he will speak to you through it. Uh, and you'll know it's him because it'll touch your heart, it'll bypass your mind. Because mm. that which is of the spirit will touch your your, your heart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, one of the famous um, lawyers who uh, thought he was going to disprove the Bible, C.S. Lewis, uh, in, in fact uh, convinced himself of the truth of it. And we've heard that story many, many times yes. as well. And then you've got someone like um, Charles Finney, who was also a lawyer. He was many, many people were coming to the Lord through his ministry. But having read a lot of his work, um, he was convicted by God. Because God spoke to him, well, what about your own kind? And it was none of the lawyers were coming. None of the lawyers were being affected by Charles Finney's ministry. Mm. So Charles Finney decided so what god said to him was like meets like so he decided that he was going to call a conference just for the lawyers and he used legal terms and legal language to decipher the gospel and bring an understanding of the gospel and 300 lawyers got saved that day 
simply because he and I think that's a lot of what's happening the Bible some people may think it's a language um, that they don't understand but what I would encourage people is the, the Bible is written in many different translations don't be concerned find a translation that you gel with I, I understand it when I read this and read the Bible um, and it can also be some may think it's not understandable because of a cultural setting but the truths of the Bible are beyond cultural setting they're universal Yes. Yeah, we're not limited to the culture there. Certainly if we dig deeper, we gain a greater understanding, but we're not limited um, by not knowing the culture mm. as well. What, what I find am- amazing is that uh, you'll be reading a passage of Scripture that you've read hundreds yes. of times before and all of a sudden, ooh, yes. I didn't see that there before. Yes, it, that's right. It's, uh, yeah. it, it never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. So I would call for maybe a um, a seeker, someone who's seeking. I would call the Bible a, a book of incredible divine guidance and instruction. Um, and I guess probably the question I would leave people with is, um, do you want simply to have a life of full independence and freedom, trusting your own wisdom? Council, or do you want to have divine guidance that doesn't limit your independence and freedom but brings you into a quiet of freedom that does have boundaries mm. because those boundaries keep you safe and guard and guide your life unto life, unto goodness, unto all that is um, for your well being. Um, but in a world that we live in today, a lot of people see independence and freedom, which the Bible would call lawlessness, as just doing what I want, when I want, how I want, mm. but it literally leads to destruction. Yep. Yeah. One of the words you used there uh, would be very unpopular these days, and that's boundaries. Yes. Um, I, I remember uh, I used to be involved in Boys Brigade, and, um, and there was a, a lot of discipline involved in Boys Brigade um, regimentation. And uh, I remember being um, being criticised. And uh, because there was sort of there was boundaries, and I said, "Well, young people feel safe when they know they've got boundaries. They know that if they operate within these boundaries, yes. nothing's they're going to be safe. Yes. Uh, if they move outside those boundaries, yes. that's where the trouble starts. That's right. And so it gives young people a." a a very strong feeling of safety Absolutely. when, when they've got yes. the boundaries in their life. Yeah, and I think, to be quite honest, um, you know, the Bible says that fa- the Father who loves us and is good, um, he will discipline us mm. because he always disciplines us for our good. And I remember my children, I remember when, in fact, when I was a teenager, my parents would not let us do half the things that the, some of the teenagers were doing. Um, we never, we never fought it because we didn't really have that desire. But I remember at the end of my year 12, when we were all ready to disperse mm. into the world, a few of those ones came up to my sister and I, because I'm a twin and we were together. A few of those people came up and they said, we really envy you. And I said, why? And they said, because your parents love you enough to not let you do some of the things our parents let us do. Mm. And I thought, wow. Yep. And that was coming. And even though they were doing it, something deep inside told did, it didn't make them feel loved yep. because they didn't have the boundary yep. that cared for them. Yeah. Yep. So Very true. Yeah. Hopefully, um, things will sort of turn around. And uh, if, you, if you look at history, well, as, yes. as you've been doing, uh, when uh, a society moves so far away from God, uh, it, it just uh, disintegrates. Absolutely. And uh, people then sort of turn back to God. They do. And, and sometimes it has to go into you know, what I would call almost mud and vomit before mm. that happens because um, it's hard for people to discover and actually face the fact that this is the wrong way because their life has been invested in it. Mm. And it can be hard to go, I let go for a new way. Um, and to actually humble yourself, in a sense, really, to that new way as well. But the Holy Spirit knows how to draw people. Yes. Yeah. And, of course, uh, sometimes we get frustrated because we uh, minister to people and there's no response. Yeah. 
and uh, I always have to sort of stop and think, well, it's the Holy Spirit. They're yes. only going to change when the Holy Spirit yes. changes their heart. Yes. Because we, we've got no power to change a person's heart. That's right. Only the Holy Spirit yeah. does. Yeah. And uh, that's um, the only way things are going to change. And we, we just have to really, really remember, call a seed a seed, mm. a watering a watering, and a harvest a harvesting. Yes. Uh, that's, that's all we're asked to do. That's so it. sow seed, water and harvest. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> So when can we expect to see this book of yours, Lynn? Hopefully by the end of the year. I, I'd like to have it all signed, sealed and delivered, as I said, by August. That's what I'm aiming for. And so hopefully by the end of the year it will be available. Yep. So you've had people sort of proofreading and all this sort of thing, have you? Uh, or is it not I'm that just, stage I'm yet? I'm just in the place. It's a very, it's a very vulnerable thing. Yes. So I'm just in the place of discussing with certain people, can I start to send you the second draft manuscript yep. for your feedback? Because I want to get completely different kinds of people. And one of them, who I'm going to be asking soon, was actually a, a West Australia newspaper journalist right. who, who's, who's a Christian. And I thought, I know he's going to be really hard on me. <laughs> so I was sort of like taking a deep <laughs> breath <laughs> yep, yep. and going, would you look at my manuscript, please? Yeah. And then um, I guess you've got to um, promote it. Is uh, that no, the I'm word? going to leave that to the Lord. Okay. <laughs> I, this is what I say. It was very clear to me that God wanted me to write the book. I didn't yep. want to. It's very clear. He confirmed it many, many times in very supernatural ways. And to the point that I had two prophetesses from Botswana who I didn't know from a bar of soap. Um, I attended a conference, met them for the first time. One of them comes up to me, arms folded like this. Um, for people who can't see me, I'm, <laughs> I'm folding my <laughs> arms. Arms folded and she looked at me and she went, well. And I'm going, yes. And she says, where's the book? And I'm going, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so it was just like, that was that final, oh, Lord, you've confirmed it so much. I just need to... So I'm doing this out of obedience. Um, I'm doing it because God wants me to. So I say to the Lord, if you started this, <laughs> you can finish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you started yeah. it, you give me the pen of a ready writer, but you are the one you, to open the doors where you right. want it to go. So he will either tell me some things or he won't, but I leave it with him until he speaks. Mm. Yeah. And did you find sometimes that in the, in the writing that it just sort of flowed out of you and, and sort of... Uh, Almost. Absolutely. Uh, never to return, almost. Yeah, absolutely. And other times it flows and then you feel stuck yep. and you go, I don't quite know where to go from here. Then off you go, you leave it and there's something happens. You see a sign or you read a phrase or something and you go, oh, that's my connecting thought. And you you enter that in and boom, off the rest again. of it comes. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, we're certainly looking forward to it. And when the book comes out, you'll have to come in and uh, I'd love to. promote it on the radio. Yes, I'd love very to. Good. Thank you. So thank you very much for coming in today. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. We will see you before the end of the year. No, yeah, I think I'm, I'm on again in three months. I think I'm on again in July. Okay. And then November, yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Thanks okay. very much, Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Bye. Coming to you from Rockingham, IPO Radio.